Hi there, this is Aaron. Today is Sunday the 25th of January and it's day two of 2015 on the allotment. <laughs> well, I suppose the first thing that you've probably noticed straight away is that uh, my glasses have changed. Um, increasingly I've been getting more and more blind over the last few months and so I uh, went to an optician and they've said, yep, the uh, prescription has changed. Um, so uh, these are my new glasses, um, so a bit of a, a, a change of look. <laughs> well I have been busy here on the allotment and I've also been working out where things are going to go. So uh, let me show you around first of all and uh, show you some of the decisions that I've made and also some of the progress that I've made. <laughs> now up the top end you can see that more digging has been done. I'm not quite to the very end but I'm not too far away. And uh, I've decided this is going to be where my potatoes go. I'm actually gonna cover part of this because I've still got the green bags and I'm gonna grow them above ground on top of a tarpaulin um, to sort of kill off anything that's in this soil. But I'm also gonna get some of the um, 35 litre pots that Dan talks about and they are going to be part um, buried into the soil. Um, yeah, so the bottoms are there so that the roots of the potatoes can come through and down into it. So uh, that is going to need quite a lot of space but I think that's going to cover it for this year. So uh, that is going to be my potatoes. Here I've got a strawberry bed. Now I know nothing about these strawberries and I've decided that I'm just going to wait and see what happens. So uh, we're going to let these grow, we're going to see what they're like, what sort of strawberries they are. I may decide to pull them out, but uh, you know, there's, a, there's strawberries already in there. Strawberries are tough plants, they're going to survive whatever the winter throws at it. And so we'll see what happens and then we'll make a decision through the year what to do about this strawberry bed. Whether to move it, whether to pull everything out, or whether to stick with it. This bed here... This is going to be where my alliums grow, so this is going to be my onions, my garlic, and my leeks. Now, I might need a bit more room than I've got, but uh, we'll see. Um, I do have options to uh, extend my allium bed a little bit further back, um, forward, and also to split it and put it in two places. But uh, so far, this is planning on being alliums for the year. This is another bed that I've decided to leave. I think this is comfrey. And so again, we're just gonna see what happens here. Um, there's grass and everything in it, but comfrey can outcompete most things. So uh, if there is comfrey in here, then that's my fertilizer for the year. And uh, I'm quite keen to uh, have my own fertilizer because I think this soil, I mean, it's, it's very crumbly and very sandy and beautiful. Um, but it is going to need water and it is going to need fertiliser. So uh, the more comfrey I can have, the better. Again, just with you know, the same as the strawberry bed, really. If it's no good, if it doesn't do what I want it to, I'll pull it all out. I'll make that decision as I go through the year. OK, now this one is covered. Um, this is actually going to be my bean bed. When I've got everything else dug, I'm going to be bringing in some manure and I'm going to be putting manure over uh, this end because that's where I'm going to erect all of my bean poles. Um, moving further back, because obviously I can't sort of have bean poles through all of this, this is going to be brassicas. So uh, beans and brassicas in here. Um, as I empty the potato bags, at the other end that will be where I put my winter veg um, but in terms of summer brassicas they are going to be going here. Now you can see some of these uh, bushes are actually starting to get buds on and wake up which is a wonderful feeling. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what everything is again I mean this is very overgrown there's a lot of grass in here um, I may end up just pulling everything out but I want to see what's in here to uh, give it a fighting chance. Um, I was chatting to Tony of Tony's allotment and he said that gooseberries, which I, I have, 
need more than one plant. And I thought, oh, have I got more than one plant? And I've just counted them, and yes, I do have more than one plant. So uh, clearly that's going to be uh, okay, or at least the intention is that that's going to be okay. This is my primocane raspberries all cut down. And actually I can see that you know, there's little buds developing there as well. Um, again, it's full of grass. I've given the grass as much of a haircut as possible. Um, this is going to be a case of keep an eye on things along here because you know, the grass will grow up around everything. I need to keep it trimmed and then put a mulch down as soon as I can see where the raspberries are coming through. Well, this area isn't dug yet and I think this is going to be where my greenhouse goes. Um, I might have to do something with moving the bench, uh, but uh, the intention is to have something under cover so that uh, yeah, that gets the sun, uh, that I can have well ventilated and is stronger than the previous greenhouse, and I think this will be where I put it. If I don't, then I think this is the place for sweet corn, and uh, so that's what I'll be uh, looking at putting in. Now this is rather exciting, because I don't know if you can see, that's rhubarb coming through. I actually thought rhubarb was growing somewhere else, um, but if this is rhubarb then I suspect that can't be. Um, but yep, the rhubarb is coming back into life. Again, it's got you know, weeds and grass growing in amongst it. I suspect I will be pulling this rhubarb out at the end of the year, splitting the crowns um, and uh, putting them into something that's uh, a little bit cleaner soil. But uh, again, I mean, rhubarb competes very well. This looks to be an established plant. So uh, I'm hopeful that this is going to do well. It's not just here at the allotment that I've been busy, because I've also been getting my early seeds ready. Um, I planted my onions, my leeks and my tomatoes uh, to see how they're getting on. So uh, let's take a look. And also, let's take a look at the chilies. <laughs> here is an update on the Kelsey onions. Now, not all of them germinated. I'm a bit worried that I've made some of them a bit too wet. Um, but we have got some through and uh, they're certainly coming along. So uh, they are ready, I think, very, very soon, probably sort of end of next week um, to be potted on. So uh, they're doing good. Now, we've also got the yellow Rinsberger onions, and they've come through as well, and they are ready to be potted on too. But uh, certainly everything's come through there, and it's going well. Here are the leeks. They've come through as well. They were planted, um, I believe it was the 3rd of January, and uh, they're coming through too. Not all of them have germinated. These seeds are a year old. Now, you'll see that one of them looks to be a lot shallower than the other. And uh, there's a, um, a bit of soil and uh, a telltale paw mark because uh, once again our, our Ginger Tom has uh, decided that uh, he is the best gardener in the house and decided to uh, pull out one of the leeks. So that one is an ex-leek but uh, the others are doing good. And lastly at home these are the chilies. Now if you look at this lemon drop there are chilies that have been forming a while here and you can see on the insert actually one of them ripened. That chilli was five and a half centimetres long. Um, it certainly packs a punch. But yes, I have my first chilli of the season there. And hopefully the others are not going to be too far behind. But uh, very, very pleased with these overwintering chilies, especially this lemon drop. I'm hoping that the Scotch bonnets can live up to the same standard. And then last but by no means least, all five of these Nimbus tomatoes have fired. They're in an egg box, they're going to be ready to be potted on as well soon. But uh, they're coming through too. <laughs> I've had my first chilli of 2015. Jamie, if you're watching, I'll beat you. <laughs> Yeah, I did cheat because that one's been going for a year now. So, uh, But it's uh, good to uh, get an early crop. So that's my first one. <laughs> well, I wasn't actually going to chit my potatoes this year. Um, I did chit them last year. And I know that chitting is sort of like a subject that some people say you have to chit and other people say I can't see any difference. 
Well, the chips that I got on the potatoes last year, I didn't find particularly inspiring. And so from JBA seed potatoes, they allow you to say when you want your seed potatoes delivered. And so I said, well, I don't want them until the weekend before St. Patrick's Day. So that's when they will be arriving. But one of the varieties, which is this one here, which is rooster potatoes, which is an Albert Bartlett variety. This is my wife's favourite potato for roast potatoes. Um, we tried the Golden Wonder last year and that was absolutely gorgeous and I completely get why everybody raves about the taste of those. The problem is you don't get very many, they're not very big and they are a really late variety. Now these are also a main crop but they're not quite as late as the Golden Wonder and they've arrived early. Now I'm certainly not going to criticise DT Brown for sending to them to me early. Thank you very much. But it does mean that I'm going to do something now which I wasn't intending to do, which is chit them. And I saw on Chris's video that you know he says chitting a main crop is absolute waste of time anyway. But uh, the alternative is that I keep them in the bag and I keep them in the box and they get little spindly chits. So uh, what I'm hoping here is that here in the shed where it is light, you can see light coming through, um, but it's not, you know, sort of warm, so it is quite cool. I'm hoping that they are going to be all right here. Um, the shed itself is sort of well made, and uh, um, I don't think they're going to get knocked off or blown off or anything. Famous last words, of course. But, uh, right, this is the beginning of this year's potato crop. We'll see how we get on. Well, this is really the first time I've been able to show you the plot. When the sun is shining, we've got a bit of sun today. And when you look down at the scenery, and then uh, my shed at the bottom, <laughs> this really is a beautiful way to spend the day. I'm always very happy when I come here. You can't help but uh, feel good about the world when you see things like that and you hear the birds singing beautiful. Well I am very pleased to announce that uh, this bed where my potatoes are going to go is now dug. Um, it's taken me a good few hours but uh, I have been helped by the fact that you know it's not heavy clay it's very sandy um, soil. It gets a little bit heavier towards the top here where it's on the flat. Now something else I've also noticed is that in there I think that's another rhubarb plant coming through. So I haven't dug that. I want to see what goes on there first before I start uh, putting my fork in there. But uh, that's starting to look as if it's getting ready now for spring and that makes me happy. Well I think like everyone um, I've been absolutely in awe of the garlic that uh, Ian Noxon grows. Um, this is Southern White, which is the variety that Ian grows. Now last year I grew Lautrec White, which is a French variety that has been sort of um, selectively bred on the Isle of Wight to make it sort of suitable for UK conditions. However, this one is probably the most suited to UK conditions. Now I know that what Ian does is um, he puts his garlic into modules, sort of now, and then leaves them in an unheated greenhouse. Now garlic needs 30 days and 30 nights of temperatures less than 10 degrees. Um, it doesn't like to be sitting in wet, so it really likes well-drained soil. Now my theory is that, Ian, you're um, raised beds which are incredibly well drained I think that's got an awful lot to do with the garlic that you get and I think I've got well drained soil here so I'm going to try an experiment I've got half of the garlic that I'm going to plant straight into the ground right now and the other half that I'm going to put into modules and I'm going to see if there is a difference in the garlic that we get. I mean, of course, I mean, I might have left it all too late and the garlic that I put in the ground now doesn't work. But I mean, Solent White is the variety to plant sort of if you are starting in January, which I am. So uh, I'm, I'm giving myself as much of a chance as possible, given the late start that I've got. So I'm going to try that right now and uh, plant the garlic. We'll see how we get on. <laughs> So here is the garlic in the ground, it's right next to the comfrey, 
there's three rows and there's between 11 and 13 garlic cloves point, uh, planted in each row. So uh, that's my first crop in. We'll see how it get on. <laughs> and with that, we're coming to the end of the day. <laughs> it's been a really great day today. I've got lots of digging done and I've planted my first ever crop. <laughs> so that makes me feel good. I can feel that spring is on the way. We've got a little bit of sunshine in the sky still, um, but uh, the sun will still go. We've still got very dark nights, but uh, you can see that spring is on the way. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on The Allotment. Goodbye.